All right. Welcome back to the Notorious Podcast. We just wanted to hit you up one more time for the holidays and talk about what's going on this week with automotive news. Uh, we're just going to jump right in. Um, Elizabeth Puckett here with Steven Sims and Christy Lee Telcat has been stolen. Yeah. So she's a, if you're not familiar with her, she's an automotive personality. Um, mm. for she's, whatever. Also, she's also on HGTV, I found out. I know that. Okay. What is that? <laughs> the home home and garden. Oh yeah. Yeah. That one, you know, where they do home improvement stuff. She renovate houses while they're stealing her Hellcat <sighs> outside. Yeah. Shut so it said somebody she posted online, somebody stole my effing Hellcat and it took them 40 seconds, is what she said. Um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I th- sure. Um yeah. So is it the Hellcats that's behind her in the picture right here? Yep, like that's that the one that, that, that challenged her Hellcat. Yeah. Oh. And uh, she already Adorable. had these photos, these little posters made up uh, to sell. And they, yeah, they got it fast. I mean, it went real fast. You can mm-hmm. see in the video here. Just boom. And they're gone. They did a, like, they spun the tires on the way out of the driveway. Mm-hmm. Poor thing. It sounds good though. That's a great sounding car. I don't think the audio is playing on no, this video, but it was a great sounding car. It sounds modified. Well, that sucks. Well, yeah, it does. <laughs> but and and she claims that she never spends any money on herself. It was the one thing that she got for herself and somebody mm, Sure. Yeah, I don't know if I believe that, <laughs> but that's the story. <laughs> like but... uh, yeah, I can make a comment on how much she probably spends on makeup a month, but Ooh. I'm just not going to go there. Ooh. Oh, this was in Florida, too. It was in Florida. The land yeah. of nobody having garages, apparently. I know. Like, I was like, I swear, why is it parked outside? <sighs> I swear nobody has a garage. And like, what is this? I guess. Christmas lights. Christmas lights. Okay. Because it was, uh, I think, the Friday after, it was Black Friday, like that night. Is this but, another Challenger in the background here? Did they pull up in a Challenger to still have You know, I, I can't tell. Yeah, it may be. It's kind of dark, but it looks like it may be a red Challenger. And then, they do this a lot. They, they'll they boost one to go boost more. Well, you know, I guess <laughs> she should have contacted yeah. this next lady who yeah. Oh, yeah. tracked down oh. her own stolen car. She uh, needs business. I, I love this lady. This is awesome. Because the cop's like, well, there's not much we can do. And she's like, that's it. I'm going to go find yeah. my car. The hell there is. Yeah, she's in Florida, too. So mm-hmm. Christy Lee, I don't know, hit her up. What's what's this lady? <laughs> Seriously, like th- this lady has some gumption. They stole her E three fifty, and and she just kept looking for it, and eventually found it, and a bunch of other stolen cars. Oh yeah, yeah. And she helped out like a whole bunch of other people. She, she helped out a bunch of other people. Oh, there's a Mustang. Yeah, there's a Mustang, and I forget what else they found with it. But um, the Mustang was the most exciting out of all the cars that were with it. But they're all just parked in in this uh, empty lot. And like, like the cops didn't think that was suspicious, <laughs> right? Like, really, I I know in a lot of places, and I'm not trying to rag on cops. Um, they're kind of overworked, and they don't have a lot of resources, especially after you know things happen where they lost some money a couple years ago. So. Um, but still, like you got a bunch of of, uh, of vehicles just sitting in an empty lot, and nobody thinks huh, I should call the cops. This looks suspicious. I wonder why all these cars are just sitting here. Yeah, and it looks like know. there was like an RV in the background. Yeah, yeah, you see like these nice cars. Yeah, yeah just all parked up in into like lot. an overgrown. Yeah, it's like yeah, like is that normal in Florida? If you if you live in Florida, comment. <laughs> let us know. Do, you, do people just like normally do that? Because it's it weird here. Alert me. Yeah. So good for her. Um, yeah. And if yeah. she's driving a BMW, uh, BMW says would say to keep it and don't sell your car. Um, this is so weird. I've never heard of an automaker saying don't sell your car. Yeah, to to keep your old car and don't buy a new one yeah yeah it, it's kind of weird it's like the grocery store saying like grow food at home and don't come by yeah. the store. it's it's weird um yeah it was uh um one of the executives uh monica, monica Dernay. Dernay, yeah i forget what um what she's over uh it's somewhere in here why don't i remember but anyway yeah she's just 
basically saying because of shortages and so on, um, you know, and also to, you know, protect the environment, just keep your old car instead of buying a new one. So this is about saving the planet? Is not and I think new cars. also with the shortages, because they can't make as many cars as they used to. Um, I mean, I don't fundamentally disagree because no, somebody saying no. go buy an EV, my first thing is like, okay, so instead of keeping my car that I already have, that's already been built, we're mm -hmm. going to build a new one. Which making those batteries uh, cause, it, it yeah. produces a lot of emissions. So if a ton of people are buying EVs all at once, and we're concerned about emissions, well, that's going to actually walk us backward because the, the least polluting car is one that's already been made. Yeah. At least there's a valid argument for that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and so no, I, I agree with you. I don't necessarily disagree, but as I point out in the article, there are different governments, you know, state governments in some countries where they're trying to get old cars off the road, essentially forcing people to buy new cars. Right. So there's like this push-pull here. And you have automakers trying to get people to keep their old cars and governments trying to get people to buy new cars. And I don't know, the whole world has gone insane. Yeah. Well, that sums it up. All right. Thank you for listening to the Tory podcast. <laughs> that, that's all we have. No, we're joking. We're joking. That's it. Um, and then she made another comment about the designing cars. So seats can be removed and fresh seats can be put in. Yeah. Yeah. So, Essentially, so you can just like start swapping out. And I'm like, um, you, you do know that you can swap seats and cars. Yeah. You right? could do that already. Also, no, apparently not. I don't know. My seats are, uh, I have a fairly old car that's been raced and driven till the door literally fell off, like the door skin came off. And I, my seats are like the last thing that I would worry about, yeah. like all the serviceable parts, even like the internals for the engines and the gasket. I would be more worried about that than the seats. I think when I mean, you don't know how cars work, you <laughs> focus on the, the, the thing that you touch. That's my guess, at least. I'm like, no, oh, come on. Anybody who has ever worked on any mechanicals in a car. They're more concerned about those wearing out because yeah, they that's do wear out faster deal. than the seats. Yeah, and when one thing starts to go, it's just the S Cascade. show from there because yep. yep. it's like your alternator goes out and then the next week your battery and then your starter and then that's just the easy stuff and you belts. Don't and... say. <laughs> yeah, I know you, I've heard you've had a little uh, experience yeah, with that. It happens, you know, and that's the thing is if you keep an old car long enough, yeah, you're replacing all sorts of things on yeah. it. But, and and here's the thing, though, is that it's cheaper than having a car payment. And I know some people try to argue with that, Mom, but if you do the math, even if you have a fairly cheap car payment, you're paying enough to replace the engine on your car like once a year, essentially. Yeah. So that's a lot of money. So I yeah. don't necessarily disagree with what this woman's saying, but her reason for it, I think, is off. It's scurry. It's definitely scurry. Mm -hmm. I mean going back to the fixing it thing though if you drive your car a lot there mm -hmm. is some argument to upgrade because there was a point there where john's truck was breaking so much and it was yeah. just so like yeah. then that's when we got well, the right and if you depend on it for work you can't have it breaking all the time too mm -hmm. so no I, and i agree with that and i'm not saying you know it's a one-size-fits-all solution for everyone oh, but i'm I just know. saying there's a good argument for keeping an old car Especially yeah. if it's like your backup vehicle. Well, I'm a lifer with my cars. So mm. <laughs> I have my first car still. And if I wasn't in a car accident, I would have had the scat pack still and probably try to figure out how to get a Hellcat, but probably still have that one. Um, hey, you could have had Christy Lee's Hellcat. <laughs> I could have. I mean, they're not looking at it and it's white. See, well, it's a Challenger. Sorry, Challenger guys. I don't. Yeah. I prefer the Chargers. Challenger. But if it was a white charger, I might have stolen it. And know. the chargers are mom cars. Chargers are mom cars. <laughs> <laughs> I can just like feel the seething of the streetcar takeover guys in their chargers every time. Like, and I love pulling up to a gas station too and getting my kids out of the back and everyone's looking at it. I'm like, ha, huh, like mom car. Like, yep. And seeing other chargers trying to race me, I'm just like, we're going to soccer practice right now. Like, go away. Hilarious. Drive off in your mom car. No, and then, and their cop cars too. So it's just there's some irony. 
there yeah yeah in it's, it's a, different it charger camps covers a wide group of, of people yeah it does but, although i've been told i'm the only mom that drives a hellcat so uh, i doubt that I, I i know it's not true but yeah yeah <sighs> seriously so, hey yeah. have you had many problems with it rusting though no i haven't you well, know, and I don't even have any devices or anything like that. How do you live? How do you not have rust? I mean, this lady was in Ontario. Somewhere yeah, in Canada. 2017, yeah, it was Ontario. She, 2017 Ford Escape. And it was rusting like crazy. And she was shocked because she paid for an electronic rust control device. Thought that that's, that meant that it wouldn't rust. Yeah. Um, that's so kitschy. Like... Mm-hmm. snake well, oil salesman they, got her they've, to buy been, that. they've been around for a long time there's some people who swear by them mm-hmm. but there's a lot of people who realize i mean they work on boats because boats are submerged in water and so there's something about the con uh the conductivity of the electricity from the device because it puts out a low level of electricity throughout the body and that's supposed to help stop oxidization. But it doesn't work as well on cars because they're not in water. Now, I'm not a chemist. I'm like, you know, so go ask somebody who's a chemist or, or maybe a physicist how that works exactly. But all I know is that, um, you know, the, the rust proofing coatings and so on, those work so much better. Right. Especially the more modern ones. Um, if you live somewhere like in Ontario where they salt the roads in the winter, and I know because I used to live where they salted the roads in the winter, your chassis is going to start to get surface rust pretty quickly. Even if you religiously wash off the chassis after you drive through storms. I mean, it just, it happens. But a rust, electronic rust control device, I mean, did she pay for the blinker fluid reservoir <laughs> upgrade and, and a bunch of other stuff? Like, Wow. That's the first, yeah, this is the first time I've ever heard of that particular thing. I know about all, like, the really? rust coating, but also yeah. I've never lived in an area that salt the roads. So... That, that might be why you've never heard of them before. Because yeah. I, I knew about them, and I knew uh, some people who just swore by them, but, yeah, people in the know are like, uh, If they gar- I mean, okay, so if they guaranteed it when she bought it, and it's a 2017, and if it's rusting now, I can see why she'd be Man, pretty upset yeah. about it but i don't she, know who would buy that like thinking it would work uh well again i mean you know when you're more concerned i'm gonna get about some this, like hardcore hate in the comments about this one i can already feel it <laughs> when you're more concerned about the seats than, than the engine in your car for it lasting sure. a long time i mean you know i just uh no. some people just don't know much about cars i mean that's just the way it is and so they get taken on these stupid gimmicky kitschy weird things i mean i i knew a guy back in the day who uh thought that ba- bypassing your o2 reservoir with a resistor would uh increase horsepower on a vehicle yeah you know. and he couldn't explain why well he had this weird convoluted explanation that didn't make any sense so it's like running richer or something or... that's what he thought but i'm like the computer actually adjusts for that mm-hmm yeah so it's one year but yeah it'll go into like loop. he was absolutely convinced to add like 20 horsepower <laughs> to any car i don't know people get these weird ideas i just yeah uh, we need to come up with some sort of editorial something or another that we can keep going about people who do strange things to cars yeah. this was a conversation i was having with the detailer yesterday you know, he's asking me what's the weirdest thing you've ever seen somebody do to a car and i'm like just <laughs> generally they neglect it and like, well, i've seen a lot of people use stuff from home depot and such mm-hmm, instead of mm-hmm. the proper thing you know mm-hmm. using dryer vents to make air it's cleaners and oh yeah, some, yeah. Or, uh, air yeah, intakes true. and things like that but yeah we need to keep like a running list of just we weird should. things that people we buy should. into i've seen people use actual like soup cans as finishers on their exhaust weld those on oh. there, which is <laughs> wow they got the idea from the tuner crowd or something um well one thing that i think is weird and i see people do this at the gas station all the time is they'll fill up their car until it clicks off and then they'll rock the car back and forth and like make the liquid settle and then try to fill it up some more. What? <laughs> it's not Cheerios, people. It's liquid. 
<laughs> I've never gonna... seen anybody do that. Thank God. I um, have. I've I've seen it all the time. It is so ridiculous. See, now you're I'm, gonna start noticing it. Uh, probably. I have to get gas too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go to the racetrack, like watching everybody. No, I yeah. always heard that you don't want to fill it completely up. No, no, it can it's ruin the, the um, enough room for the vapor. Yep, the... for the vapor. Yeah. Okay. It'll it'll ruin it, and you'll have a really expensive fix on your hands. I see people who who try to get just that last little bit of gas yeah and... they sit there and squeeze it and then they <sighs> overfill it and it's pouring yep. all down their car and it's just great i have a very specific kind of filling up the gas tank anxiety because my dad told me and this is like this is another thing what did elizabeth's dad say this week <laughs> not to let it go below quarter because all that crap that's in there which this is probably like some old school stuff but all the crap that's in the tank gets sucked up when it's below quarter. So it can't go yep. below quarter and I can't fill it up all the way. That, that and I'm also to, superstitious about filling it up all the way. That used to be a concern back in the day. Nowadays, yeah. you just have Probably a Probably not a thing anymore. Well, nowadays, if you run um, some cars dry, um, it will burn out the fuel pump. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I believe that, that one. Because the fuel pump has to be lubricated by fuel. So I know some people, oh, it's no big deal if you run the car dry. And installs out. I'm like, yeah, you might be replacing a fuel pump, though. Yeah. yeah speaking of John's deal. old truck, that was one thing that he run out of gas locks, twenty five hundred, and he's working out of it. Mm -hmm. And the gas is Chevy Silverado, two thousand one. So anybody who's ever had one of those trucks knows that the dashboard was definitely out, <laughs> and the fuel gauge never read right. So he ran out of gas like all the time, and then oh, he wow. like have to replace the fuel pump. Yep. Not too long after, oh, the fond memories of laying on the side of the road, hitting it with a hammer, trying to prime the pump <laughs> enough just for that one last crank to you, get it you, off the interstate. You haven't lived until you've had to um, do, you know, something like that to get your car going. Oh, we've done so many but sketches. Push start it and pop the clutch. Or, yeah. You know, oh, well, we were talking about arcing the starter. Like me. Yeah, we're talking about arcing the starter. Oh, it's so yeah. sketchy. It's just so sketchy when you do it. You're like, <laughs> yeah, because I borrowed somebody's truck, F 150, and I'm like going to get something to eat. And it was a shop. They had my car. The guy hands me a wrench and he's like, come here. This is how you start it. And showed me how to arc the starter. I'm like, I think I'm gonna die today. Um, but yeah, I had to, I had to arc the starter, oh, and then we went to the restaurant. And that's great. Hey, it's better than arc again. Do you remember that news story from a few years ago? The lady where her battery died, and she called 911 because she couldn't get out of her car because the locks weren't working, and oh the firefighters God. had to show her how to just pull up on the lock, and she could get out. You're kidding. No, this she happened like I don't know, like six. Lock? Yeah, she didn't know how to pull up the, the lock and just open it manually. No, oh, no. She was trapped in her car and like panicking. Some people need uh, a lot of help. I yeah, think well, I think uh, as things have become easier to use, as cars have become more reliable, people have become softer and they don't know how to check or service things on their car at all. Like the old owner's manuals would uh, show you how to adjust the valves. And nowadays it's like, oh, yeah. don't, don't drink the washer fluid. <laughs> yeah that's the warnings in it no oh, my so dumb. newest car it says in the owner's manual about like the coolant to take it, it doesn't say what kind of coolant it is or mm -hmm. how, whatever it says to take it to a, the dealership mm -hmm. to have it drained and refilled when it goes past a certain line and i'm like what you have to take it to a dealership like, oh, it they tell you what kind of coolant you they want to funnel all that sweet money through the dealership service department i still don't get that's, that one like why can't you just I, I, low, why can't you just top it off i had a certain brand of a uh, swedish car back in the day where mm. um, the dealer tried to tell me that if i didn't use the branded that automotive brand of coolant in my vehicle that it wouldn't work correctly that i couldn't use prestone or whatever yeah. <laughs> nice story guys uh totally false but okay yeah. well and at least the, they told you what kind of coolant it was i mean well it was back before this doesn't we, even say it was back when only volkswagen used the purple stuff and gm used the orange stuff and everybody else used the green stuff so that wasn't hard yeah nowadays it's gotten a little bit more complicated it's gotten more complicated and i don't know 
and people are, are being dumbed down by the industry i swear well yes yeah. they are and i mean you barely even have to know how to drive a car i was <laughs> yeah yeah because it'll sit there and chirp at you if you're not driving correctly yeah i mean yeah. some of them will just put you back in the lane if you drift out sure. so why pay attention like i don't know people don't appreciate driving anymore but mm -hmm. if you were driving a hertz car and got pulled over <laughs> and taken to jail or even yeah. if you drove one months before and then got pulled over for speeding, you can go to jail. Yeah, so we've been covering this Hertz uh, situation where basically they, I don't know, they have some weird system where they report cars stolen that haven't been returned within well, like an hour or something or some, ridiculous. For some people, they, they extended, you know, they're like, hey, can I extend my rental period? And then like something happened where the car didn't, authorized yeah and they just would report it stolen as the accusation at least yeah yeah well, and then people who had nothing to do with the reason the car was reported stolen are getting pulled over in this mm -hmm. car that's been reported stolen it's so stupid and taken to jail i can't imagine this makes me never want to rent a car ever again and i hate i hate renting cars to be honest uh I, yeah, I, well, they've they've at least settled with at least some of these people. Three hundred and sixty-four claims. I don't know how many people that is, because some people might have more than one claim. Right. Um, hundred and sixty-eight million. Hundred and sixty-eight million. Here's the We're sad part. Get the part calculator is, out. Well, here's the sad part: is do you know how much of that the attorneys probably take? Yeah. Uh, people who think that that uh, when you settle with a company, you get all that money. No, your your attorney takes a big. Yeah, I'm chunk sure they got that. at least. So let's say they got. 50 percent mm. and we're gonna divide yeah. that up okay i did 165 on accident so two hundred thousand dollars piece is what it comes That's out to some money yeah oh and then uncle sam takes a part of that too. yeah so yes. divide that by 47 yeah. percent and <laughs> <laughs> well you know I, mean, I don't know i'd probably still get pulled over and taken to jail for a hundred thousand dollars I think wow. that was, that that's my number. I mean, hey, if I got it let out that's the next day, price my yeah. little higher, but that's my sellout price is a hundred thousand dollars. Hundred thousand. Take me to jail. This is as long as I get out. Jail's not a pleasant place. Uh, I've never been arrested. Thank well, God. I've never been arrested either, but um, I've knock on knock jail. on fake wood. Yeah, it's not a pleasant place. Oof. Yeah, I got. I don't want to think about that. Yeah, <laughs> but for hundred thousand dollars. I probably would okay. so okay gm is on some something <laughs> and they want to turn the camaro into a sub brand oh not just the camaro also and the corvette the, um, and the escalade. escalade yep so tell tell us what i think that the camaro is the most surprising because they have been like so non-supportive of the sixth gen yeah, I know. I mean, they they keep pausing production on it. It's not selling much. They've they've kind of just admitted that it's a dog, which I I know there are people out there who love the six gen Camaros, and I'm not saying that they're horrible, but it's a dog as far as sales. It's not selling much, and we can have a discussion about why that is. I think there's a few reasons. Um, but yeah, so now they're but I think they're trying to cash in on nostalgia. They see what Ford has done with mm -hmm. the Mustang Mach E. You know, the thing that enthusiasts absolutely detest before it is, is doing a victory lap and as they're increasing production on it and seeing how successful it is. But I wonder how long the mach -E, uh love affair is going to continue. Because remember back when Toyota first came out with the FJ Cruiser and everybody wanted one and it was so cool. And yeah. Sales were red hot. And within five years, production was done because sales fell off a cliff. And this happens a lot so mm -hmm. but gm's going to start trying to copy the ford model because ford's supposedly going to come out with more broncos more versions of the bronco which i'm sorry but those bronco sports i look at them and i think they're ridiculous because i think a bronco i think a truck mm -hmm. you know a, a, a you know body on frame four-wheel drive off-roader yeah nothing yeah. else is a bronco in my mind it's like what they did with the hummer yeah making yes. it all small yeah gm didn't learn its lesson with the hummer because mm. that that just blew up where it became a mommy mobile yeah i want to get one of the original hummers the i was elephants? thinking about that if i had to go back 
Or if I had to go back into an SUV for any reason, that's what I would get. Is one of the... Yeah, an H1 Alpha. H1, Ooh, yeah. Especially the diesel. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Those I are... saw one of those hit an intersection. It literally hit an inter- like the entire thing. It mm. knocked down all the poles, plus <laughs> took everything down, and it, like hit a car, another car, and a building. And this thing was fine. It was oh, yeah. like, okay, I just hit everything. Although if you take the armor plating off them, they can't stop small arms fire. <clears throat> Watch block Black Hawk down. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um, so yeah, but the looking, Hummer. Looking forward to. Uh... Yeah, so uh, the the word is, and and these rumors have been going around for years. Car and driver says that they have some anonymous source within GM who's confirming this is going to happen. But these rumors have been flying around, at least as far as the Camaro and the Corvette, for like at least four years. Mm-hmm. That they're going to come out with a crossover and a sedan version of those. Now, are they actually going to do it? Eh, who knows i mean rumors are rumors and then and then as far as the escalade they're going to come out with a unibody mm, uh, crossover minivan. smaller mm. unibody crossover and get this a minivan a luxury escalade minivan because nothing says escalate quite like a minivan take that drug dealers with, with, <laughs> maybe <laughs> the drug dealers are going to be rolling around in minivans now <laughs> Well, and so, and I didn't put it in here, but they're talking about how in China they have luxury minivans, which they do. But the Chinese market's totally different from the North American market. I don't think people here want luxury minivans. No. I mean, minivans aren't even popular here anymore. They're not. They, really they don't are. They don't sell that many of them. The I, last time I checked, which was a long time ago, the Toyota Sienna dominated the minivan sales, and they still didn't sell that many of them. Mm-hmm. Well, we've got SUVs like yeah everybody everybody wants an suv especially women yeah (laughs) i mean women are driving the like why the lamborghini urus and and why the the ferrari pro song suvs they're pretty lush on the inside and then they can get good gas mileage depending on which one you get and and you get to sit up high and feel like a big person right yeah (laughs) It's a joke Although, I make most of the, the people that drive SUVs, like I feel like they they should shouldn't, <laughs> but oh, especially a lot of the mommy mobiles. Yeah, they have damage on like all four corners. Yeah, you gotta love it. They can't park it. Mm-hmm. I just, mm, mm, yeah. Well, but you know, this is what GM's thinking, and uh, I just I wonder if this is just going to be a catastrophic failure. But who knows? Maybe it'll be a runaway success. I don't know. Well, they got themselves in trouble before with all this like submodel crap yep. that they used to do like yep. back in the 70s. Yep. Like when the Chevelle became its own. Because <laughs> hey, it used go. to be a Malibu. Yep. But in the 70s, it was, which I think most people would agree that the 1970 Chevelle is like the best looking oh, car. Yeah, that that's a, a bucket uh, list car for me. Yeah. I love them. Yeah. Um, actually, my favorite Chevelle is the 1966 Chevelle. Mm. But I see it. I get it. So yeah, we're going back to Florida. Are we back in Florida again? What's Florida? going on? Today's oh, just man. Florida day. Oh, Florida. Oh, so these guys are cruising along watching this Chevelle. Um, spec- I don't know what they're doing. I don't know why they're filming somebody else's car. It's sort of because they're freaking out as a Chevelle. I mean, they're in a Subaru for crying out loud. Bam. <laughs> oh. But wait for it. There's more. And mm. barrel roll. So mm. this Chevelle's going down the road and oh. just goes from the complete left side of the interstate. And I don't know what happened. I I think we would probably figure it out if the guy didn't pan away. But it's just like he looks away and then comes yeah. back. I, and I the wonder Chevelle... if, well, I wonder if the Chevelle driver dropped the hammer and it torques here. Yeah. That's I mean, kind of what like... it... We didn't get a good view, but it kind of looks like that. Yeah. I'm not sure. It's like there's some smoke that's coming up. So he's either, I think he might have like slowed down to try to show off and like do mm-hmm. some kind of rolling burnout and just lost it or something. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's something about the rain, but I don't see any rain. Well, like, there's some rain on the windshield and it's Florida, you know. And the roads aren't rain. wet. Yeah, but if there's just a little bit of moisture and you have summer tires on that, that's, that's uh, enough. Stomach turning. I mean, that's yeah. almost the Chevelle. It's pretty jacked up, but the person driving it's probably okay. Mm-hmm, Unlike the minivan that went minivan. to 
six barrel rolls over there just minding its own business those, those little kids are, are gonna remember that for the rest of their life Ugh. yeah and the messed up part is, is that i don't even know if they're okay i tried to look into There's find no that information. information and i haven't like i can't even find the police report for it yeah i mean i think what it comes down to is if you're going to show off your muscle car you better as hell know that car really well yeah a lot of people that once it starts to torque steer then they just hit the brakes which makes it worse they don't know how to pull out of it yep and i mean panic yeah that's a really big mess up that's a really big mess up and that like Uh the the, the chevelle driver got out of it so easy too if he barely got into an accident he just hit the just wait until he sees the consequences of you know, what happened, though. Because uh, it's all on film, too. So yeah. uh, I'm sure the, the cops are very interested in, in the film. Maybe. And the insurance companies, too. And, uh, yeah, there's going to be some pretty stiff consequences, I'll bet. Maybe. But, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. We witnessed a very similar accident, and the cops, um, it was on the dash cam. Mm-hmm. and the cops are like get back in your car I'm like well no, all right no, there you go okay the insurance company <laughs> might be interested yeah if i knew who to hunt down but we saw a buick mm. flip a crossover like a pancake um going through an intersection the crossover ran the red light and it flipped just like that um but the but crossover yeah. was at fault huh these old oh yeah big time Those that crossover drivers no, I'm just oh my gosh and like this thing had so many airbags in it. The guy was in like an airbag coffin. Oh wow! By the yeah. time he landed, so so many modern cars they have airbags coming out every which way. And just like with the Chevelle, the Buick driver was just like solid, just sitting there watching the flip, <laughs> like this car flip out of control. They do not make them like they used to. They don't. That is for and sure. that brings us to our inventory picks because we both picked some kind that of does older vehicles today yeah, 1948 yeah. just, chevy um, 35 3600 thrift master yep. post-war chevy i mean they, these were uh, a big deal when they came out because uh you know obviously they weren't making any civilian chevys during the war what they're mm-hmm. making was going to the war effort and they were just making the pre-war stuff even right after the war uh, but then they went back to the drawing board and redesigned, and uh, these were a big deal. Uh, these are something that you could see at a you know local dairy or farm, mm-hmm. or you know wherever they they needed a workhorse like this. So these were all over the place. These helped um, fuel the country after World War II. Uh, you know they they were um, the quintessential truck. Well, these and the Fords and so on. You know I don't want to. I like the way you present that story. That's really like sounds that sounds I mean, good. Well, that's it's why I chose really it though, because I mean, you know, this is this is an American workhorse. This is what helped build the country back up after uh, the Great Depression or World War II. I love it. I love it. So, and and this one, they say that it was in the original owner's that family. bulldog. <laughs> yeah, it's got a bulldog hood ornament. I mean, <laughs> nice. what's not to love about this truck? So it's all documented. It's been in the same family until now. Mm-hmm. And they they have uh, all kinds of, of photos and, and documentation. Is that the truck? That's on the catalog. I'm cover? not Wait, sure. It might be, or it's just the manual. I'm not sure on that because uh, it's been repainted, so maybe. All right, hold on. We're but it looks pretty original. I mean, you look at that interior, and there's no like Alpine stereo wedged in there. Yeah, it it's been resprayed because there's oh, some yeah. pictures where. I'm wondering what this catalog for NPD is about. That's what I'm wondering too. I don't think it says in the description. Like you can have a parts catalog. But you could uh, talk to the dealer. I'm sure they have more information than what they've listed here. Yeah. yeah, They they have all that documentation in a binder. Um, But yeah, you know, just would be uh, quite the vehicle to own. Mm hmm. And, and I know some people, oh, well, it's not an Aston Martin or whatever, but, you know, these, these things, they help build the country, so. Yeah, I like that. There's a value there. You should definitely get into truck sales I and present that story. That's very compelling. So I've got a truck, <laughs> too, this week, but mine's so um, basic, so Neanderthal. I'm it, like, it's got a snowplow. plow. Snowplow. Like, that's it. That's it. That's the whole thing about it. 
1979 I mean, F-150. I, I would arc the starter the, on that thing. You could send some like Plow King down the side. No. Yeah. You have vinyl so you can remove it. You don't want to ruin the patina. So yeah, you don't want to <laughs> ruin the rest. I mean patina. The patina, yeah. That's what we call it. That so long bed flat. truck. Yeah. Yeah. I'm noticing less and less long bed trucks on the road lately. Well, I don't know why. I, you know, yeah, that's that's I see some of them uh in the more rural areas because I think you we know we need them. Yeah. But yeah, that that's a, a good question. The the disappearing breed of long bed trucks. Mm -hmm. I think it's because everybody has to have a, a quad cab now. Crew cab, yeah. Crew cab, quad cab, whatever, you know, four door. Yeah. And if you have a long bed as well, it makes it that's really a lot of truck <laughs> big. And so it's it's impossible to park in a normal parking spot. Oh, but those are my favorite people to watch park. And they just oh, yeah. they, they can't they can't figure it out. Unless they, they know their truck really well. Yeah. Then they can. They can park it no problem. And that's amazing to watch as well. You know, I saw um way back years ago, uh it's I forget what it's called. It's a Ford Super Duty, but they um extend the the cab so it has six doors. And it has the extended bed and it's a dually. It's this uh, um, aftermarket. I think uh, they do it in Canada or something like that. Man, I don't remember. You know, I should have looked it up before, but I just thought of it right now. If you know what I'm talking about, I have a, a photo of it. I took it sitting in a Walmart parking lot at like 10 o'clock at night in a snowstorm. Mm. And yeah, it's like, that was the first time I'd seen one in person. I knew of them, but they're kind of rare. And that thing was huge. So speaking of, you know, really big trucks and how hard they are to park. And this thing was parked across two parking spots because <laughs> of course it was. In, in <laughs> one parking spot. It was impossible to fit in one parking spot. Thing was like a school bus. Yeah. So, but this one comes with the plow, right? I yep. imagine. You start your, your snowplow business like Homer Simpson. <sighs> Man, well, you know, considering how cold it is in Phoenix right now, I'm gonna need to plow the no yeah you need snow. this basically like plow the so, frost and you could fight the polar bears off fight, with it too fight the polar bears <laughs> they're fighting the coyotes right now yeah so yeah it looks like this person lives, lives where they might need it which uh, yeah, either it's, of it's, us do um <laughs> but boise okay no it's not yeah. located in boise it's that's not located of, that's yeah okay interesting Wonder that's sort of a is. weird piece of information like mm. i'm still in this car but it's like it's not in dallas texas okay just so you know so where is it <laughs> i don't know not in dallas texas well that's odd but that's, anyway yeah that's right. a, that's a another workhorse from another era and yeah another brand for a different purpose so that's been the Notorious Podcast. We're going to be back after the holidays. So we're going to start fresh at the beginning of the year. We're going to have all kinds of stuff to cover and go over. Um, maybe we'll talk about that weird canister that was in that, what was it, a Chevelle that I picked yeah. last, last time? We figured out what it was, but we're not prepared to talk about it this week. So all of this stuff, uh, the links to everything, if you're listening to it, we're going to have the links in the description um, or if you're watching it, it's still going to be links in the, the description. So uh, come back, like, subscribe, all that. Thanks for listening.